Hey peeps, it's James Buckle and Gage Pixel, and I'm here with a little game maker how to. For this episode, I'm going to be making destructible terrain, the kind you see in games like Worms, where you fire little bombs and they make all these cool little holes in the terrain. It will also, if you use a pathfinding grid, I'm going to show you how to uh, update the pathfinding as the terrain deforms. In part one, I'm going to show you how to put holes in a sprite. Just like this, clicky, 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 and it's got holes. This will form the basic foundation of creating destructible terrain. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need is just to make a sprite, just a one to eight square sprite, and just put some whatever color you feel like in there. I've just done it like this with these four colors so that it's got some kind of pattern that I can identify. And you need a room with, if I drag this up, and this up, and this up, like that. Just create a room that's 1280 by 720 in size, and set the background color to be a dark gray. Now we're going to create an object and I'm going to call it Obj Terrain and this is uh, Obj underscore Terrain underscore Terrain? Where's my keyboard playing up? and this is going to be the kind of um, this is the terrain object and your terrain is just going to be a two dimensional array of these as it were just all stacked on top of each other drag the sprite over if we go over to room 1 we can pop it into room one and close that back. Now the first thing we need to do is create the create event. Get rid of this gubbins at the top. And we're going to need a flag, just a boolean um, variable. And we'll call it hit. Which is going to use to register when something hits this terrain and does it damage. And we set it up as false. Then we're going to need a, so for testing, I'm going to use the left pressed event, and I'm going to put the damage, when it takes damage this will be processed in here, so every time I left click on this little block of terrain it's going to make a hole in it. So the first thing I need to do is get the position on the sprite. See the the um, when you click you get the mouse XY position in the room and I need to convert that to the position on the sprite where it's going to make the hole. So we do that I'm going to create a temporary variable called MX and I'm going to subtract the X position from the mouse's X position with mouse x minus x so this subtracts wherever you've clicked this subtracts the x position of the terrain from the x position of the mouse in the room what you have left that little difference is the relative position of where you've clicked the mouse on the on the um, object itself and its sprite so we do that for both the x and the y coordinates and then I need to actually log the damage location on the variable so we're gonna go back to the create event and I'm gonna create a couple of damage x equals zero damage y equals zero but that again equals equals zero and then I'm gonna assign these, temp these uh, variables here So, damage X and damage Y are received. Da so, damage X equals MX, damage Y equals MY. Now, you might be wondering why didn't, why am I using this little buffer variable here? Why don't I just put mouse X and minus 
X directly into damage X. Um, if you're doing nice efficient code, if you're working on a console, that kind of thing, then yeah, you, you do it like that. But by localizing variables in this way, it helps when you're debugging code and because it, if, it, if there's an error in this, in whatever function you're creating, when it when it trips a, a breakpoint you put in or if it causes a crash, the debugger will have localized all the various variables and you can look at them and be like, oh, that number's wrong. So it just helps to, if you put a little buffer here in between the mouse X and mouse Y and the, and the, and the damage X, it just helps a little bit later on when you're debugging. So having logged where the damage, the X and Y position that the damage has been taken, I then flag the damage, so the, the boolean flag that I set up earlier, I set that to true. Now I'm going to create the draw begin, or in a draw begin event I'm going to create the actual bit that makes the new sprite, so because every time the um, Every time you click on it, it takes the, the current sprite, makes a hole in it, sets that to a new sprite. Essentially replacing the old sprite. That's what we're going to do. So we're only going to do that on frames where damage has been taken, which is why we use the variable hit. So we're going to say if hit, and inside here we're going to put all the um, make a new sprites code. Here we go. Now I'm going to add at the bottom here hit equals false, which then turns this bit off. So essentially, when when you click on it, when you click on that on this terrain object, it it's going to log here. The XY position on the sprite where you've clicked it, set the flag to true so that when it hits the draw begin, it draws the sprite and then only draws it once by turning the hit back off again. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new surface, draw the current sprite to that surface, punch a hole in that sprite, and then create a new sprite from this surface to replace the old sprite. So the first thing you need to do is create a temporary surface. So we're going to go var as a local variable var temp surf, and this will be our new temporary surface. Surface create. Let's drag this over here to fill the screen a bit, and we want hmm, right width comma sprite height because we want to match the sprite and the um, we're going to match the height and the width of the current sprite when we create this surface and then we want to set the surface target to render to to this temporary surface so surface set target and then temp surf. So created a surface the same size as the current sprite and we pointed the and we set it to be the surface that's rendered to instead of the screen surface which is the default surface that's rendered to. Now we're going to want to draw the current sprite whatever the current sprite is that's what we're going to be doing damage to, so we're going to draw it onto this surface. My typing is rubbish sometimes. So we're going to draw sprite, and then we're just going to use sprite index, whatever we're currently set to. Now, it's a single image on the sprite, so it's just image zero. And it's also the top left um, XY position or the XY position on the where we're going to draw it 
is going to be 0, 0, because we're just drawing a 1 to 8 square sprite on top of a 1 to 8 square, square sprite. So that'll be 0, 0. So now we've drawn our sprite onto our surface. What we now need to do is make a hole in it. And to do that, we're going to use a the uh, blend mode subtract. So we need to change our blend mode with GPU set blend mode. And I'm going to set that to BM subtract. So now instead of adding to this, the, the surface sprite, we're taking away from it. And we also want to set the color to um, black to ensure that um, it might, because it's subtract, I'm not sure exactly if it definitely has to be black, but um, I've always done it this way, so I'm just drawing it to black, and, and I think that's you need to, so it's going to take away. Now we actually need to draw a circle to create the hole where we click and that's going to be draw circle and we can use the damage x and damage y position that we logged earlier which is the position relative to the sprite where we clicked. We're going to give it a radius of 12 which is a reasonable size and we don't want it to be an outline so false. So now we've drawn a um, a circle, a hole in, in the sprite where we clicked. We need to do a bit of cleaning up. So first thing we need to do is return the blend mode to normal. Otherwise lots of screwy things will happen in your code or in the rest of your game it'll, it'll all get a bit funny. So we need to revert the blend mode to BM normal. Now once we've done that we need to create a new sprite. Um, because surfaces are volatile, they don't get held in memory, they get overwritten, funny things happen to them, they just don't get kept around very much. So you can't so you need to use them and then free them up and not keep referencing them all over the place because they won't still be there. Outside the little section of code that you create the surface and use the surface, the surface can't be relied upon because it's volatile. So what we're gonna do is use the sprite create from surface function to create a new sprite in memory from the surface that's just been created. And I'm going to assign that newly created sprite to the sprite index. So sprite index equals sprite create from surface. Now the first thing you need is an ID for, for the surface. So that will be temp surf. We then need to put the X, Y coordinates of um, where it will be created from, which is just the 0, 0, because it's a 1 to 8 sprite from a 1 to 8 surface. And that's the, the width and height again will just be the sprite width and the sprite height. Next, we have, let's see, remove back. Um, smoothing, um, these are both false. Um, remove back, look, it, it's one of the, it takes one of the corner pixels and whatever color that is, it treats it as if it's an alpha and removes everything from that, but I'm not using that and also I don't want to do any smoothing. And then set the origin, which of course is just the zero, zero top left corner. So. Now, the sprite was drawn, a hole was made in it, and that's been set to be the sprite index. Needs a little bit of, of um, clean up. First we need to free up the, the uh, surface from memory. So surface free temp. surf and then I need to create a collision mask from this from the new sprite that's been assigned to the sprite index so sprite collision mask 
um, sprite index and then separate masks no we don't want separate masks um, bbox mode is 0, 1 or 2 depending on what you want to do and 0 is automatic because I just want it to create automatically I'm not going to manually create a um, collision mask I just want it to look at the sprite that I've created and create a mask from that sprite where which will have the hole where it is so that's 0 and because it's automatic and that's 0 then the rest of these can be 0 so that's all of those are zero, and that's zero, and that's zero, and that's your lot. So now a um, so now we've created the collision mask from the from the um, sprite. So let's run this and see what happens. Okay, here we have the little block, and when I click on it. It makes a hole! Look at that! Yay! Look at all the holes in the thing. I could sit here clicking forever until it's Swiss cheese. So, now there's one little. I'm gonna restart this because I'll show you there's actually a flaw in that code. There's a little bug which I'm going to show you. Now if I drag this down, let's just move that down here, and we look at the debugger behind it, you'll see here memory, which currently has uh, 13965k, which is, you know, quite a lot of memory to be using. Now if I just move this up here, so you can still see the memory, watch what happens to the memory count as I click. It's going up. Now, there's a reason for that. It's because when I create the new sprite and assign it to the sprite index, the sprite index is holding a pointer to the to the previous sprite and the pointer to the memory location gets removed without the sprite being deleted. So each time I click, I'm essentially creating an entirely new sprite and replace. And I'm not overwriting the old sprite, I'm just forgetting the old sprite and it's being left in the, in the memory somewhere. So we need to actually delete the old sprite. So let's do that now. We need to go down to where the sprite is assigned, which is here, sprite index. Either side of that, Need to create a little buffery majiggy. I need to create a sprite. A, 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 I need to create a temporary variable that holds the current sprite index. So we'll call that var old sprite equals sprite index. So old sprite now holds the index of, of the current sprite, and then on the next line down, the new sprite is created, and the sprite index and it's an index assigned to sprite index which now means we can go in this line here and we can delete the old sprite we no longer need it, it's out of the way we go sprite delete old hang about, that's not right let's try that again sprite just like that and now when I run this now, if we keep an eye on the memory again, we see it's sitting there, 9,200-ish. Start clicking. There's a slight increase in memory, but it didn't rock it up like it did last time because the sprites that we no longer need are getting deleted from memory. So that's the end of part one, where I've shown you how to create the basic making a hole in the sprite. In part two, I'll I'll um, make the sprite a little fancier and show you how to have uh, several of them next to each other and have them damage each other so that a 
damage gets past the neighbors and they overlap and uh, you can actually start building a proper level with the objects kind of thing. 